Russia has launched a drone attack against Kyiv for the first time in 12 days. Ukraine says air defense systems destroyed all targets on approach overnight. The latest escalation in violence comes as tensions build and casualties mount on the front lines of the Donetsk region. The Ukrainian Air Force says the attack included eight Iranian-made drones and three cruise missiles, all of which were shot down. Officials say one person was injured and three homes were damaged due to falling drone debris. Journalist Rebecca Collard gives us the details about the overnight battle. Ukrainian forces are saying that they were able to actually shoot down all of the incoming fire overnight uh, from Russia. Now, uh, we actually have this video first. You can hear these air raid sirens, uh, the capital again under these air raid sirens, uh, warning people of an incoming fire. And then there's this actually uh, quite dramatic footage of uh, you know, the what appears to be the Ukrainian air defense system actually targeting these incoming missiles and this, these projectiles exploding over the capital overnight. You know, the other thing is that today um, Ukrainian forces are saying that they were able to target a Russian tank in, in, near the city of Bakhmut. Now, of course, Bakhmut has been one of really the hot spots of fighting, one of the most, the cities where we've seen some of the most um, active conflict in the last few months. And we know that that is a very contested area and a one where, where both the Ukrainians and the military have, and the Russian story, have really been focusing their forces. Um, and they released this video, which shows, it appears to show them exploding a Russian tank. Now, I will say, you know, Hillary, I think we're, we're a week after this attempted mutiny uh, last weekend in Russia. And I think what we're seeing really shows that um, the hopes that maybe Ukraine and its allies had that uh, the events last weekend in Russia would slow uh, the, the battle, would slow Russia's aggression in Ukraine or would slow the fighting uh, appear to be dashed now. This fighting is, very, the very, fighting is very much ongoing, Hillary. Vladimir Putin, Rebecca, of course, has faced uh, an armed mutiny just last weekend from that private military group, the Wagner Group, and what they've been calling this March of Justice. That's what the Wagner Group has called it against the Russian military. What more do we know about the attempted mutiny one week later now? Yeah, I think the interesting thing, Hillary, is that we still don't actually know that much more. We haven't um, really heard many more details about what happened. I think most importantly, why it was called down. But what I will say is I think what we're what we're seeing from Ukraine, from Ukraine's allies and a lot of people who are Russia watchers is they want to know what the impact is going to be short and long term on um, uh, on Russia, on the leadership of Vladimir Putin and on Russia's war in Ukraine. And as I just said, um, you know, in the short term anyway, it doesn't seem to have had a big military impact on what uh, Russia is able to do in Ukraine and, and, and fighting in Ukraine. Now, um, yesterday, the CIA, U.S. CIA director um, spoke and, uh, you know, he made it clear again that the U.S. had nothing to do with, uh, with this attempted mutiny, but he also said that uh, the U.S. Uh, hoped to capitalize on it. And let's listen to what he had to say. Disaffection with the war will continue to gnaw away at the Russian leadership beneath the steady diet of state propaganda and practiced repression. That disaffection creates a once in a generation opportunity for us at CIA, at our core, a human intelligence service. We're not letting it go to waste. Yeah, so I think that's quite interesting, Hillary. The other thing is, I think one of the key things that um, Ukraine and Ukraine's allies are looking for is what happens to these Wagner fighters that um, that were under the control of Yevgeny Yev Prigozhin, the head of the Wagner forces and the longtime ally of Putin. Now, um, after a few days after this uh, mutiny was called off, uh, we heard from Vladimir Putin and he gave those Wagner fighters choices. He said, you can either go uh, to Belarus and join your leader in exile, or you can join the uh, Russian military, sign a contract with the official Russian and military. Now, the deadline for that was yesterday, Hillary, and we really haven't heard um, uh, how many fighters might have joined, how many fighters went to Belarus. So there's really this unknown factor. And I think in the next days and weeks um, ahead, that's one of the things that we're really going to be keeping an eye on, how many of these Vag Wagner fighters who were so key uh, to Russia's fighting in Ukraine before this mutiny will be back on the battlefield in Ukraine, Hillary.